Um, I'd like to introduce a different side of Adorno that you might not be very familiar with, which is a summary of this little book here called in German Erziehung zur Mündigkeit. In English it's Education to Maturity. So my article or my talk today is my talk today is a summary of the essence of this book. So the Adorno died in 1969, but uh, my point is that Adorno is still relevant for us today, not just in Germany or in the West, but maybe also in Sri Lanka. And I'd like to you to, to think about uh, this issue, um, if we talk about coming to terms with the past. Um, with reference to the war and uh, um, the, any terrorism and any problems connected with that. So in terms of coming to terms with any trauma that uh, society has experienced, um, like in Germany, for example, after Auschwitz. So Auschwitz, you're all familiar with that term, the concentration camp, which is in Poland today. Um, Adorno made the point that uh, this, in a way, was a marker point in history. It was not just one of the events um, of the war trauma, but actually it should be upgraded to a paradigm. Paradigm means here it's a new way of understanding. And in that sense, he is updating Kant's categorical, categorical imperative. Um, so let's see. There is one particular image that I'd like you to show you to see which had a very big effect on me when I was standing in front of this. This was in an art, art exhibition in, a German in my university town in Germany. And it shows the carriage where the, where the, um, the victims were. And this was uh, done by a recent artist. And so if you uh, not just uh, understand it as a memorial, but there's a better word in German, which is Mahnmal. Mahnmal means it, there is a warning, there's a message in, in it, in the word, which should be something that we need to get on board, not need to experience to some degree, if possibly be opening no, to this kind of message. For example, if we could imagine for a moment, just for a moment, it was, if it were us coming out of these carriages now, very well knowing that this is our way to death. So just for a moment, what would go on through, what would be going on in your mind while you're experiencing this? So this is a very different way of looking at life. It also had another significance.
Salerno proposes a new categorical imperative and psychological conditions that are likely to lead So there are, main, there are two main points which he uh, highlights here. <clears throat> the, the debate about educational ideals would be trivial without updating Kant's categorical imperative. <clears throat> so the first one is to develop self-awareness, as Monica already has pointed out in Kant, social skills and communicative competence from preschool level onwards. So the interesting thing is that in Sri Lanka, there is no real proper training for preschool teachers. And that is an interesting point, because uh, it is kind of uh, taken for granted that the children will um, kind of pick up you know, the main, main ideals of society somehow unconsciously. But uh, this is the foundation that we lay for the next generation and future generations. And to critically analyze the psychological pressure under which individuals succumb to authoritarian rule and thereby reduce themselves to objects of manipulation. So today, this, uh, of course, this was written in 19, uh, this was written in the um, 1960s as a, an update of his 1940s work. But um, today we might not experience society as an authoritarian society, but rather as a permissive society or as a society in which hedonism is ruling. So in that sense, we have to kind of find a way to update his own update. But I think there are similar personality structures um, in all kind of uh, um, you know, personality disorders. Um, I'll come to that in a minute. Adorno's point is that the common view that people are seduced and victimized by an evil leader into blind obedience is this was the one that we normally learned in history, in our history class. And we are all victims of a, an evil government or something like that. Yeah. So we are basically also innocent victims and have nothing to do with our own history. Freud's writings on group psychology and civilization in particular have shown how individuals change when they become part of a group, especially large groups. The group functions almost exclusively through unconscious instinctive mechanisms, which are just like primitive people worship, instead of systematically investigating the truth for themselves. If this insight would be incorporated into the school curriculum, Adorno argues a social climate could be fostered in which children become aware and learn to become more self-reliant. According to Freud, early childhood is the most important. The first five years are the most important <coughs> for the whole life. So do we learn from our mistakes? Human history has evolved via a self-contradictory dialectical process. On the one hand, there are, there are signs of progress towards the global world community, but on the other hand, there is also symptoms of collective destruction and regress into delusion, inhumanity and irrationality. This was uh, Adorno's and Horkheimer's contribution in Dialectics of Enlightenment. <clears throat> um, technological research that blindly supports authoritarian regimes symbolizes that reason has always been a two-edged sword. As long as reason is used as a means to, or method to free the destructive. In Enlightenment, reason was regarded as the panacea that would solve all problems of humanity. But now we know that in the name of reason, many atrocities around the world have been committed and are still being committed. Authoritarian regimes tend to victimize minorities by using the most rational procedures, which simultaneously justify their aggressive policies. Adorno claims that it is not enough to analyze the logic of destruction, but that we need to study the subjective and objective conditions of violence in order to understand the underlying psychological and social mechanisms that lead to such behavior. Merely blaming and punishing the perpetrators or persecutors does not dissolve the unhealthy underlying conditions. So, is there any progress in history? What is progress? Today, society is characterized by a steady increase in social pressures that arise from, from a feeling of claustrophobia, of having to live in a socially engineered world 
with an ever tighter web of psychological manipulation, which has gone out of control. Technology, like electronic media, is never neutral. Most people seem to think it is just a means through which any, any message can be uh, channeled, but it itself is not neutral. That is my point, and I don't know in that way I'm interpreting I don't know. The more powerful it becomes, the more it functions as a normative force. The pace of life has constantly increased through electronics, both at work and during leisure time. Actually, these media have dissolved the distinction between work and leisure, since we are expected to be available all the time, even during our holidays or when we are sick. Nobody seems to question this anonymous force that dictates our lifestyle, sets the pace of our interactions and controls our desires. This has become the preferred network for channeling propaganda messages, for surveillance and personalized subliminal advertising. The electronic entertainment industry plays a prominent role here uh, as, it con as it promises uh, instant relief from all the fears and pressures of modern life. But simultaneously it seduces us to use its media channels as substitutes for genuine relationships people are being mediated through the internet, the more they are commercially exploited as objects at the receiving end. Today economic growth is more and more based on this kind of service industry. Its psychological effect is that the individual mind is chronically being externalized and thus alienated from the subtler feelings in the body. People have become so conditioned by it that it has reached a stage of addiction, which is being glamorized as freedom through consumption. War games and loud electronic music, which are played for hours at night, in combination maybe with drug and alcohol, have a especially damaging effect, not just on the brain, but also on human relationships, on the ability to relate in a social, empathic way. <clears throat> now, the importance of self-awareness. When people do not develop an awareness of self and others at an early age, they also do not develop the necessary virtues to use electronic media in appropriate ways. Without the inner strength to make their own independent inquiries into truth, they are more likely to repeat unhealthy behavior patterns. A person with an under, undeveloped or damaged psychic structure is much more prone to exploit himself and others than someone who is self long term consequences or content. People who harm themselves are more likely to harm others. They willingly surrender to powerful messages and carry out orders for negligible rewards. This instinctive mindset was defined by Freud as pre oedipal Not having worked through the unconscious identification with authority figures, it results in an uncritical superego, which dominates the unconscious needs, the id. Out of fear, the ego becomes overducted to external reality, which suppresses its underlying needs. In an overducted personality, guilt is evolved not when the natural needs have been ignored, but rather when the values of the superego have not been respected. The perpetrator's attitude towards authority is one of overadaptation, which manifests in blind submission and uncritical obedience under anything stronger than himself. Inner strength consists in the capacity to handle conflicts in a constructive and creative way. The more someone surrenders under the pressure to conform, the less they have the courage to handle challenging tasks in creative and constructive ways. A weak character reveals itself through automatic identification with those in power, regardless of content. Adorno discovered that the prison guards of the camps who were willing to carry out any job, however cruel, were mostly uneducated and mentally in, uh, retarded young men from remote villages. Therefore, he suggests that the countryside should need to be given special attention to close the cultural and educational gap between villages and towns. In practical terms, he suggested mobile libraries, um, like a bus could come to a village once a week and um, uh, offer, this is actually what happened to my village um, in Germany. <coughs> and um, so that's where I actually started reading Adorno. <laughs> at uh, age 16. Therefore, he suggests the countryside should need to be developed. And uh, one of the examples is uh, this educational uh, means. The other one is um, to send counselors to offer services to 
uh, families in need, damaged families, traumatized families on the wall, adult education courses, evening classes, and distant learning programs. So the Open University started in response to that in Germany. So, and then also we had, um, up to that time, I think we only had two TV channels, first and second TV channels. I remember I was 12 when, the first, when we got our first TV, and black and white. And then suddenly the third, in this time, in the, the mid-60s, we had the third channel, which was devoted purely for education. Um, <clears throat> an important aspect for Adorno was, uh, who was victimized himself in school, is the cultivation of a body awareness, through which one's consciousness becomes anchored in the observation. This would counteract the impulsion to blindly act out violent verbal or physical behavior and sensitize people to the suffering they inflict on themselves and others. At the same time, it empowers us fearfully not to be able to observe these uh, feelings. As part of the training out about the damaging effects of harmful verbal and physical practices, neither masochistic nor sadistic sexual behavior should be glamorized. An awareness of cartoons on TV, you know, cartoons have more violence than other uh, crime. Uh, other films in adult education, in adult films. So uh, from early age, the children are exposed to more violence and uh, learn to laugh about it or ridicule it. Mm -hmm. This is a very serious issue. Um, or in competi competitive sports, uh, to promote values of mutual respect and fair play. Um, also, uh, what we have now recently is, um, you know, this. Uh, this uh, nuisance of hooliganism in sport and football stadiums. This should be um, made an issue also. So Adon observed that in total organizations like uh, military and religious organizations, initiation rituals are quite common whereby pain is inflicted on new members of a group in order to make them lifelong supporters. This practice is historically rooted in some local customs that humiliate those individuals who do not obey the clan leader. But even mainstream education upholds some unrealistic ideals, such as being hard against oneself and ignore one's feelings. Their feelings numbs their capacity for empathy and compassion. Psychotherapeutic research has shown a direct link between blind submission under power and control and emotional coldness. Um, so there's um, several research projects have been going on in that name. Um, Blind submission is achieved when a person has turned to, into a fearful puppet, a passive object that has given up its natural curiosity and interest in learning, someone who has lost a sense of who they are. The deeper this attitude is being internalized, the more it, has been, the more it is then being projected onto others. Others are depersonalized and seen as an anonymous mass. This is the overall effect of TV in America and maybe in other countries as well. I don't know, you have to make their own judgment about how, affected, how it has affected Sri Lanka. Then Adorno <coughs> defines the manipulative character in uh, the following ways. A strong desire for streamlining, organizing other people, an inability to develop genuinely mutual friendships, a lack of emotional intelligence, an overvalued realism, no wish to improve anything, action for action's sake, regardless of content or meaning, blind imitation of stereotypes seen in, adver in advertisements, a willingness to reduce oneself to an object, an acceptance of force and even violence to make a person fit into a collective and being meant. And this was tested, the first um, empirical research was done in the early 1940s by uh, some other German uh, social scientists. And they, conf they confirmed uh, several of these points. Since most people are not born with this attitude and behavior pattern, some clarity is needed about the conditions under which this character type strategy would need to be developed to prevent its further deterioration by altering those conditions. Now, <coughs> Donald uh, is uh, trying to uh, explain Freud in a, in a social uh, social context, Freud discovered that groups tend to activate a herd instinct in the individual which makes him or her feel secure and accepted. Despite, it serves to keep collective guilt feelings suppressed and to celebrate each other's courage and collective narcissism. 
The worse the crime, the more the individual's perception has become distorted. Their thinking capacity is limited to absolutes, to black and white categories. Since such groups tend to change can usually only come from outside such groups. But if psychotherapy, for example, they might open up to change. So it was found that young soldiers um, in Africa, uh, in Uganda in particular, who committed mass murders against their own uh, tribal people, and who later went underwent group therapy, became aware of the nature of the acts and then tried to repair the damage, and they became very politically active. People, so there is a chance for them to, uh, to turn this bad experience into something very positive. People like to view technology as an end in itself. They do not see it as a mere tool, an extension of human dexterity. But when the means of self-preservation are fetishized, it is a sign that the goal, a dignified human life, has been forgotten. For example, Adorno says that a person who fetishizes technology cannot really love. Their fetish shows an inability to genuinely care about others because their whole energy is invested in developing and perfecting machines and computers as ends in themselves. This seems to be symptomatic for modern civilization as a whole. An obsession with technology as a substitute for genuine human relationships. In a highly competitive culture, students are trained to pursue their special interests from an early age, while altruistic projects are usually postponed to the time of retirement. So my conclusion now. If anything can help against ignorance and apathy as a precondition for crimes against humanity, it is first of all the cultivation of self-awareness. The avoidance of unpleasant truth and the rebuking of those who try to raise the issue make a recurrence of horror more likely. Based on Adorno's social and psychological research, the points that I've made here highlight some of the subjective mechanisms that allowed our truths to happen. Those who have denied it will probably deny it again today. It is important to also try to understand the objective conditions under which minorities are being persecuted and not to be misled by government propaganda. In addition, students must develop a courage to question the kind of technology that our culture promotes and develop an understanding of how it shapes their perception. Education, if it aims to uh, for truth realization, must teach about the play of forces that operate beneath the surface. Walter Benjamin, Walter Benjamin in English, once remarked that the administrators who turn into desktop criminals may not be prevented from planning their crimes, but at least their servants should be protected from those self-degrading practices that harm them. How relevant are these reflections for educational policies today? Does the Ministry of Education promote independent and self-responsible human beings? Or rather, self market? If this kind of inquiry, it is this kind of inquiry that we would need to generate in schools and universities and society as a whole, try to keep people in a state of ignorance.